In this episode of Home Built Workshop, I'm gonna make a nice simple wall hanging knife holder. Since I made the new handles on this kitchen knife, I kind of got to looking at the way they're stored. Right now, they are not stored very well. They're just kind of thrown in one of the kitchen drawers where they bang around into each other. It's really terrible for the blades, and I don't want to get this nice new handle all banged up with another sharp edge of a knife. So I need to build something to hold the knife. I want something that hangs on the wall where it's out of the way, not a knife block that sits on the counter. Although those are very convenient and easy to get to, I don't want to take up that counter space in my house. I already don't have a whole lot of counter space as it is, so I'm pretty sure something that hangs on the wall is going to work just great. I'm using the last of these cedar fence pickets that I have on hand, and instead of using the raw weathered wood, I'm going to start out running these through my thickness planer to clean them up. Now I can rip the boards down to width on the table saw. These pieces will make up the back. Now I'll just apply some wood glue and I'll glue this up like a small panel. And I'll set that aside to dry while I work on the pieces for the rest of it. When I plane down the boards, I plane down one of them super thin. It's just over an eighth of an inch. And that's just a shade thicker than the thickest blade of the knife that I plan to put in this holder. I'm going to use these as spacers between the front and the back. First I need to rip them down into half inch wide strips. When cutting something as thin as this, where you really have no room to get in there and hold the wood, a push block is an absolute must. Now I'll take those thin strips and start cutting those down to the proper length. As Soon as the glue on the back is dry, I'll square up one edge on the table saw. Now a little bit of pre-assembly sanding. Now I'm gonna start some of the assembly. I'll start by gluing on the little spacer pieces. I'll line it up to the edge and hold it in place with some pins. Now in order to get the spacing right, I've brought the knives that I'm going to put in this holder out here to the shop. I'm just going to lay the knives in place, and glue and tack the strips in as I go. There's all the little compartments for the knives. I've left the whole thing long because I wasn't really sure exactly how much space I was going to need once I had the knives all laid out. I could just add some more spots for knives, but I've identified these six knives as the ones that I want to keep in this holder. All my other knives, I'll just leave stored away in the drawer. Now I'm getting ready to put the finish on the inside of this. In order to be able to access all of it, I'm going to do it before I assemble it. To keep the finish off the spots where I'm going to apply glue, I'm using some fine line masking tape. It's commonly used in the automotive industry. It's a vinyl masking tape. It's used for getting around graphics or flames or something like that. It's very flexible. Uh, I'm using it for this application because it's thin and I don't have to trim it down. If I use the regular blue painter's tape, I'd have to trim it down because it's a little bit too wide. There we go. Now I'll apply a finish. For the finish, it's using wipe on poly. I'm not worried about this finish coming in contact with the knives. Because almost every single finish you can use on wood becomes food safe when it's completely cured. As long as you wait until it is fully cured according to the manufacturer's directions, your finish will be food safe. One reason I wanted to use polyurethane is once it's dried and cured, it's gonna seal up this wood pretty well. That way if I put a knife in there after it's been washed and maybe it's got a little bit of moisture still left on it, I'm not gonna have to worry about it getting the wood wet, causing any 
ill effects to the wood. With this coat of wipe on poly dry, I'll remove the tape and I'll apply some more glue to all the seams and glue it up. And I screwed up. <laughs> I'm not gluing them all the way across, dang it. I need a rag. Wipe it off quickly. Well, I wasn't paying attention and I ran glue all the way across on these spacer blocks and I'm not gluing pieces all the way across the front. I've got three slats that are going to go across the front of this. So, trying to wipe this glue off really quick. Let me get this bottom one glued on here. That one's okay. Now I'll glue them on where they're supposed to go. Quick save. That was a slight mistake on my part. Just wasn't paying attention. Sometimes you just get in a hurry and you don't pay attention to what you have to do. If you don't have everything laid out and planned ahead, those little mistakes happen. Luckily, wasn't that bad. Just cleaned off the glue, good to go. Now let's wait for this glue to dry and we can get this thing wrapped up. Once the glue's dry, I'll trim it down to the final width on the table saw. And I'll give it a final sanding with the random orbit sander. Now with all that fun sanding completed, I'll just apply the final coat of wipe on polyurethane. Once the finish is dried for about a week, this thing is ready to hang on the wall. The reason I waited for a week is because I wanted to make sure that the finish was completely cured before I go and put a knife that's going to contact food inside this thing. I didn't want to take any chances of anything in the finish, getting on a knife, and then getting into the food. So I'm waiting for the finish to completely cure, that way I know it's food safe. I think this thing turned out pretty cool. It's going to hold the knives really nice, very simple. Hang this on the wall, I'll put a couple of screws in there, it's going to work great. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button, I really appreciate the support. Also, you can follow me on social media, I'll put links to all the sites that I'm on down below in the description. Go ahead and share this video, share it with everybody. Anybody you think might enjoy it, that would be a huge support as well. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I look forward to posting every single one of these videos and seeing what you guys have to say about it. You guys are awesome. And until next time, thanks a lot for watching. I did it again. <laughs> Got the camera set up for the shop. Didn't hit record. Fantastic. Guess I gotta untape some of this. So here's an interesting little tip. Before I use pin nails, Make sure you have some that are not too long and they shoot through the back of your project. Now that the glue's dried, I'm having to go through and pull them all out. I don't want to just bang them over because that's going to look cheesy. Don't forget to check that. I thought it would be okay. I turned the pressure down on my air compressor so it's not to shoot them in so far. Eh, wrong. Still did. So really what I should have done is used 
a size shorter than what I did. Luckily, they're headless pin nails, so they just pull pretty much right out. But still an inconvenience that I could have prevented. And now you get to learn from that as well. Use short enough pin nails. Here we go with the shake well before using again. Good old sticky, sticky poly. <laughs> 